Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. I'd like to review some of the characteristics of our mandibular molars starting with our mandibular first molar, which is our five cusp tooth, the most strong distinguishing point, where we have three cusps on our buccal surface and two on the lingual. Now, our buccal surface, if you put this into proper occlusion, is the one that it will be occluding in the central sulcus of our maxillary. And as a result, these, teeth, these cusps frequently become worn rather rapidly. But even before they wear, they're much blunter or much more rounded than the lingual cusps. The lingual cusps have much more of a tendency to be pointed or sharp and we have just the two lingual cusps. Our lingual cusps are also higher or further from the cervical than what our buccal cusps are. But there's also another important characteristic in relation to these cusps that will help you to understand the function and identify these teeth both that is, our buccal cusps are pulled in closer to the center of the tooth than what our lingual cusps are. Our lingual cusps are fairly close to the lingual surface. If we were to look at the tooth, we'd be able to identify heights of contours on it. Our height of contour on our buccal surface is in the cervical third. On our lingual surface, it's closer in the middle third. But that leaves our lingual cusps quite significantly out on the lingual surface, whereas our buccal cusps pull in pretty good ways. This is also a very prominent characteristic of our second. While we've got our tooth in this position too, let me point out our proximal root concavity, which is very strong on the mesial, and this could be called a mesial root concavity as well. Either term would be really adequate. And very frequently this tooth has a root concavity on the inner surface or the inner proximal surface of the mesial root which is oftentimes quite strong characteristic on this tooth, making it difficult for certain surgical procedures and also helping to divide this into two separate canals, as we'll find out shortly. <clears throat> this tooth oftentimes is called pentagonal, meaning five sh surfaces, but uh, they're referring to the distal surface as being two one in this plane here and the other along in here. Actually, when it comes to naming the surfaces, these two distal surfaces don't have a s specific names. It's just all a distal surface, and uh, they don't divide these two surfaces up in different terms. The only area that I see it would cause a little bit of confusion is if we were trying to determine our distal buccal line angle as to whether it would really be here or whether it would really be along here. It would be a little difficult to say exactly where that distal buccal line angle would be. The distal cusp, or sometimes it's referred to as the fifth cusp, actually sits right in the area of the distal buccal line angle. This does leave a distal marginal ridge which does have a valley to it and it does drop down but it's to the lingual now because of the strong distal cusp here. And uh, I've found from very personal experience that that has to be replaced there because when you get into your occlusion, you have lingual cusp or setting right down in there from one of your maxillary teeth, and uh, it occludes right on that. And if we don't rebuild it, then we frequently get it uh, broken or fractured out. Let's go to our second premolar here, or second molar, I should say, mandibular molar. This is the four-cusped tooth, more frequently cross-shaped with just a central uh, pit, central groove, and we have our two other grooves coming out to our buccal and lingual surfaces, just simply buccal groove and lingual groove. Uh, one of the difficulties in this tooth is distinguishing uh, buccal from lingual on it and measly distally too as far as that's concerned to try to it's a fairly rectangular tooth and without that fifth cusp fitting on your distal marginal ridge it becomes a little bit harder to identify. Generally speaking in all of our molars our mesial cusps 
are a little bit larger in mass and larger in size than what our distal cusps are. So that will give us a little help. Also, the tooth is frequently just a little broader through the mesial. Mesial surface is usually a little bit flatter, whereas the distal will start to round a bit on it. The important aspect, buccolingually wise, is the heights of contours on these teeth. We've got a very distinct buccal height of contour, which is towards the cervical, in the cervical third, whereas the lingual is more evenly convexed and up towards the center or middle third of the lingual surface. This was the same as we found in our uh, premolars. Our buccal cusp is pulling in onto the center of the tooth more, but not as much as what we have in our premolars. Our lingual cusps are still out close to the lingual. So these are some characteristics you can use to help identify them. Here's a stained area that shows us a contact area. Our contact area is usually in the clusal third of this tooth. And when we say contact point, we're not really referring to a point. The proper terminology probably would be better area because it is a broad, flat area. And maybe I can show you several of them here if I got some other teeth. Sometimes these will stain and sometimes you can see the light reflection. This one shows a light reflection pretty good. We got a very broad area here. Oftentimes this will be kind of cigar shaped or a little bit long, but again a little bit more prominent to the buckle. Here we can see an area right in through here. While we're looking at this tooth, I might ask you, you know, what would you classify buccal and lingual on this? We had three cusps on here at one time. You can see where it wore into the dentin here, right down through the cusps. And that would make it the buccal surface by having three cusps. It would also make it the buccal surface because that's where our wear is occurring. If we put this into proper occlusion, this is occluding with our maxillary teeth quite heavily, whereas the lingual surface is not occluding directly with the maxillary teeth unless we go into our lateral excursions. As a result, our buccal cusps are just completely worn off right into the dentin. Our lingual cusps are still quite prominent. Frequently can see this in uh, several teeth as far as the amount of wear that occurs through these buccal cusps, leaving the lingual ones even more prominent than they uh, <coughs> are in the unworn state. Again, our contact area is becoming fairly broad and prominent on these teeth. Tell by a very quick look at that one, and it's a second because of the sharp cross that is stained into that uh, tooth. That's a very typical cross shape. Frequently, this buccal groove will come out on the buccal surface and down into what is known as a buccal pit. And oftentimes, this little pit will become carious. This buccal groove carry halfway down, although not frequently over the height of contour, frequently half, two-thirds of the way down the buccal surface and end in a pit that oftentimes does need restoration. On the lingual, and sometimes this is helpful in identifying lingual, this groove doesn't come down onto the lingual surface very far. Our lingual groove comes down just a little bit. If we, several students have pointed out our card to us, we've got two terms on here which are not exactly uh, the same, but they're called the same. And this is a little bit confusing. Our mesial buccal groove that comes out of our mesial pit, maybe I can mark this with some red here, is a mesial buccal groove. We're also calling this whole groove out here mesial buccal groove, which leads for some confusion. As I said, technically, we should include the three surfaces on these grooves here. Mesial buccal occlusal groove would be the proper technical term for it. We generally throw away the term occlusal because this is really the only place in the mouth where we get a conflict and just call these mesial buccal grooves and uh, uh, mesial lingual groove and uh, we toss out the occlusal terminology. But if we've got to differentiate between the two, then we probably should call this mesial buccal occlusal groove. Actually, this could be divided down into two grooves too if we wanted to become technical. We call it the mesial buccal groove until it gets up to the buccal cusp bridge and then call it the buccal groove after it crosses the buccal cusp bridge. Uh, this doesn't occur with our distal 
buckle groove. This is called distal buckle all the way, right all the way out to the occlusal surface and down onto the buckle surface, just distal buckle groove. And the same on our lingual groove, it's just called lingual groove all the way. But if somebody's talking about a buckle groove on a mandibular first motor, they're usually talking about this more centrally located prominent uh, uh, groove, which can be equally called a mesial buckle groove. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.